Welcome back to Flatirons Tuning, everybody. We're here in the shop, we're working on this engine, and we realized that this was a perfect opportunity to address a question that we get not infrequently. Um, and, and in fact, I'll pose it as a question to you. You're, you're doing a timing belt. You have got everything lined up, and you want to make sure that you can rotate the timing belt over and everything stays in time. How many times do you have to rotate the engine over to verify that all the marks on the timing belt line up and you're good to put the car back together and drive your car? I'll give you a second. Okay. Most commonly on a lot of cars, it's just a couple of times. Maybe say two times, or maybe four. Usually, usually just a couple of handfuls. Subarus, that's not the case. Um, why is that? Well, it, what's interesting is Subaru has has made us uh, a really interesting math problem here. So before I before I do this, what I will tell you is we, we've got everything lined up on this engine. There's marks on, on uh, both sides of cam pulleys. Uh, there are green marks on this, which is the uh, driver's side, red marks on the passenger side, and a silver mark over the top dead center for the crank pulley. Now, the crank, the, the crank pulley that, that drives the timing belt has 24 teeth. The cam pulleys have 48 teeth. So for every one, or for every two times that the crank pulley goes around, the cam pulleys go around one time. Now the question is, how many how many teeth are on the timing belt? Turns out it's 281. Now, 281 is an odd number, 24, 48, even numbers. Um, but if 281 is ringing a bell with you because it, there's something that's been off with it, you're right, it's a prime number. What that means is that it, there's nothing that divides into it. So even if you go all the way around, you're not gonna be, like, you're not gonna be at basically with the centered timing mark right back on the, on the crank pulley after it's gone basically almost 12 times around. I think it's 11.7 rotations to get the mark back to where it kind of should be, but it's going to be off because there's an odd number of teeth on the timing belt. So where this creates a lot of confusion is when you get a timing belt from pretty much any manufacturer, all of the, all of the timing markers on the belts are all the same. It's just a white line pretty much on all of these belts. They all look the same. They're not labeled. There's no indication of which, well, I mean, there's, there's an initial setup phase, but then once you start rotating the belt, there's no real indication of which marker corresponds to which pulley. And so where this gets confusing is you, you rotate the engine around, say, two, four times, and there's a white mark that's very close to the crank pulley, but it's not exactly where it should be. Well, likely it's not the crank pulley marker. It's a different marker. So you think, oh, my engine's out of time, something slipped, something skipped, I need to start over and do this all over again. This, this has happened multiple times through the years, which is why we think or thought about making this video uh, to help give us a little bit better information to go by. And the, the biggest mistake you can make if you think that this happened is to stop, take everything apart, take the belt off, remove the tensioner, put everything back together and start over again because the process of retensioning one of these uh, timing belt tensioners is complicated. You, can't, you definitely cannot put it in a vise. It has to be compressed vertically. And there's a whole lot of steps, uh, according to Subaru, of what, that you have to go through to properly recompress it. And if you don't do that, you can damage the, the uh, hydraulic diaphragm in the tensioner. And if you do that, then the tensioner can fail, which is, which is a bad, bad thing to happen for sure. Uh, then you're definitely not going to be in time. So. With all of that said, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this crank around twice and let's, let's see what happens. Oh dear. That's once. There? Yep. Okay. Okay, exciting, riveting, I know. But there we've done it, we've gone around twice. We, now I, I said twice here at the crank pulley because we know that then these cam pulleys have gone once around. So everything basically should be pretty much lined up again. Now, the, the silver mark that was here is now here. So this is just a couple teeth behind the, the, uh, the indexing mark on this, this cam pulley. But this is the mark for the crank pulley. Um, these marks are, are underneath the belt, and the marks from these cam pulleys are just making their way over here 
So there's really nothing else that lines up. So if you're going by the white markers uh, on your timing belt, after rotating twice around, it would look like everything has gone horribly wrong. But it hasn't. Okay, so why would Subaru do this to us? Why would they give us such a nasty math problem? It's because I think what they want to do is they want you to set up the belt with the indicating markers to know that everything is timed initially and you have the proper spacing from each of these pulleys to one another so that they're, they are synced up. That's the purpose of the initial marks on the timing belt. Once you start rotating the engine, those timing markers don't really matter. What matters, and this is why Subaru gives us indicators on the timing cover as well, because once you rotate things around, what you want to verify is that the crank pulley and the cam pulleys are rotating in unison. And so now that we've rotated the engine a couple of times, what we're looking for is, is the indicating mark on the, on the uh, cam pulleys and the crank pulley to line up with the markers on the timing covers. Since they do line up, and so like this marker lines up, this marker lines up, everything is lined up. We went, we went two times around, everything has now happened as it should. This has gone two rotations, these have all gone one rotation, everything is still in sync, and we know that because of the markers on the timing cover. So the engine is still in time. Everything is okay, you can put the timing covers back on, and, and away you go. So that's, that's, the, that's the idea behind this, but it's just so easy to, to, be, to focus on those white lines and get confused because nothing lines up once you start into this process. And if you did the full 11.7 rotations, which let's call it 12 rotations, you're still, it's still not gonna line up and you're gonna have to go again and again and again if you really want to see those white lines come back to all of these indicating markers. That's why you can't use them. That's why you need to use the markers on the timing covers. So, hopefully that clears it up. Hopefully that makes it make a lot more sense. And honestly, when you, when you realize that the timing belt teeth is a prime number, then, you know, and it's an odd number, of course, and you cannot base the rotations of these even pulleys to that timing belt rotation. So, yeah, it all kinds of makes sense. So hopefully that's helpful. And if you, you're doing a timing belt and you found this video, hopefully it's helpful. And, and you now know, hopefully, that everything is okay and you're good to put your car back together and go on down the road. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.